That's Ray's tutoring? Welcome to today's video. We'll be going over the origin of bipedalism. Bipedalism has to be one of my most favorite topics because it is a huge step, and no pun intended, a huge step in the human evolution timeline where this opened the opportunity for social learning, communication, more food, and more energy, energetically favored uh, movement. So without further ado, we'll get right into it. So before I get into the key facts, what exactly is bipedalism? We can't just skip out and not explain what it is. So bipedalism um, is uh, it was walking on two legs. And it's a defining characteristic of human evolution. And this occurred six to seven million years ago. The earliest evidence of bipedalism comes from homonyms like Salinthropus and Australopithecus. Another one we'll see later is um, Aurorin, which we'll see, of course, in the timeline in the next slide. Um, and we'll see the development. You'll see that some of them we believed that they did both. They were up on trees. They had bipedalism, you know, so on and so forth. And we'll kind of see that timeline. So why exactly did we switch to bipedalism? Why would we go from the trees to now walking on our two feet? Well, there's actually a uh, few reasons or evolutionary advantages, might I say. It allowed early humans to, um, you know, see over tall grasses, spot predators, carry food and tools, and even cover longer distances for more efficiency. So one of the bullets I have here is there's changes in climate that led to more savanna environments favoring upright walking. So if these guys were cooped up on the tree all day, they're wondering how they're going to eat. With climate change, there was more savannas, more open environments. They have to get up off that porch and go. They have to go get food. They have to get off that tree. And then, of course, as I mentioned, bipedalism is more energy efficient for long travels compared to walking on all fours. Now, going around the corner to the grocery store, I feel, is way easier on two feet. Have you ever tried walking on all fours, trying to go there? It's less energetically favored. Another cool thing um, for why bipedalism may have came through is because um, standing upright allowed the early humans to, of course, use tools, carry objects, and then um, reduced exposure to sunlight and improve cooling in open areas. And then lastly, most importantly, to help with communication, social bonding. And you'll see a lot of times, uh, you know, these early hominins, what was important was building relationships with the group and the community, collective learning. They weren't able to do this, again, cooped up on the tree. They had to be walking upright to be able to advance themselves, to start talking, communicating, sign language, and expressing emotions. And then, of course, you know, collective, um, collective learning. So... Um, the full development of this whole bipedalism thing was a crucial step in human evolution. It set the foundation for later development, um, you know, of larger brains and more complex behavior. So that's why I really call it the, um, you know, the stepping stone to what we know today. This was the very, the, the very start. And these are some of the reasons why bipedalism may have come about. OK, and then to our left, we just have a cool picture of, you know, the different hominins up to uh, today. And, you know, this photo is a little bit stress stretched. So please do not come for me on this. But this kind of gives you an idea of the bone structures and how they've evolved over time. So now if we go into our timeline to our left, we have a whole bunch of these long name guys that I would love to challenge somebody on I bet I can pronounce them better than all of you <laughs> and we can have like a bet or something but I, 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 I really can't to be honest but we have a timeline here and it goes in order we have a uh, Salientropis uh, chidensis and this is to believe to be um, along with Aurora, uh, Aurorin which isn't on this timeline um, to have walked upright 
you know, the brain similar size to champ chimpanzees. It was a mix of chimp and human features. Again, we may, they may have walked up, right? And then we go to Artipithecus ramidus. This is where we have more uh, confidence that it probably did work, walk upright. And then you have the Australopithecines or Australopithecus. And then if we jump through Australopithecus afarensis, we say it walked upright. So you can see everything before Australopithecus afarensis, we believe may or probably have walked. But after this, we're set. We're saying these guys definitely walked. Um, and then, of course, we go into Africanus. We are going to Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, uh, Homo erectus, uh, Hadel, uh, Hadelbergensis, and then, you know, the Neanderthals and into today. And in the next few slides, we're going to go into more detail of each of these. So don't feel like I'm going too quick here, <laughs> just naming all these things. But the one key thing that we can take is that, you know, after, uh, you know, uh, Australopithecus afarensis was probably the groundbreaking finding, um, we, which we also call Lucy because we were able to get the almost complete, uh, you know, fossil and bones of this this uh, Lucy, uh, <laughs> this thing we call Lucy, right? And then after that, we can say that, you know, um, confidently, these guys uh, walked upright, okay? So now if we go into our uh, timeline, um, as you know, early primates were probably um, arboreal, and that just means that they uh, were on trees and... Um, that just means that they were uh, on on trees. They wasn't they, they weren't walking yet, right? Um, adapting to life in trees. Most ancestors walked on all fours, using four limbs for movement and then balance. As I had said before, everything before was just all on fours and just on trees. This was their primary mode of movement. Um, then we say opposable thumbs, toes allowed for better climbing and grasping trees. Early hominins relied on fruit, leaves, and insects and foraging strategies in trees. Still in this old, old tree way, group living in trees helped develop social behaviors and communication among early primates. And then living in trees provided safety from ground and influencing movement patterns. So a lot of this is focused on that a tree. So honestly, this slide is kind of like the very beginning where everything was on the tree. And if we go back to our first slide, here's all the different reasons why we move from that tree to the ground walking, right? So now let's go into the timeline. We're going to start right at Artipithecus ramidus. And Artipithecus ramidus, um, you know, is where we say we it probably walked upright. You know, we're skipping the um, Saleanthropus and the Artipithecus ramidus cadaba, but we're going right into Artipithecus ramidus. And with Artipithecus ramidus, um, this was an early hominin around 4.4 million years ago that we say probably walked upright and uh, lived in trees. So um, this was probably... Uh, in uh, what is now Ethiopia, it was actually discovered in the 1990s. So one other thing that you'll notice is it actually has a nickname. We call it Ardi. It is one of the most complete fossils found of its species. And it suggests that Artipithecus ramidus walked upright on two legs, but also retained features suited for climbing trees. And it, what it did was it really grasped with its big toe and it had very small canine teeth. So this shows that it is likely that Artipithecus ramidus was in the trees as well as um, all the on the ground. And it too, you know, we believe at least that um, its habitat was likely, you know, like a woodland environment. Um, and, you know, there's even that contradiction that bipedalism evolved in open savanna. So we're not all entirely too sure, but we just know that it was able to, you know, live on trees and probably walked upright. And I really want to use a strong probably here, right? Then we go into Australopithecus afarensis, 3.9 to 2.9 million years ago, fairly complete 
fossil record. And this is also uh, most, you know, popularly known as uh, Lucy, right? So, um, you know, where it would would be is, you know, the most present the day, Ethiopia or Tanzania and Kenya. So its fossil was actually found in 1974, um, you know, being one of the most significant discoveries of uh, any of the hominins that we have. It had ape-like and human-like characteristics and a very, very small brain. So this guy lived in a variety of, or gal, <laughs> lived in a variety of environments from forests to open grasslands and, um, you know, was considered a key species in understanding human evolution. So here we can say that most likely it walked upright on its um, two legs, just based on its skeletal structure where it was able to climb and have bipedalism. And it had much longer arms and curved fingers. And also what's most important is its pelvis. It, also, it had a very uh, profound pelvis and leg bones that were more suitable for walking when you compared it to some of the other fossils that we got of the early hominins. Then if we go into Homo habilis, most known for um, its, uh, his, uh, his tool making, you know, we call him handyman. This was 2.4 to 1.5 million years ago in Africa, mostly um, East Africa. So Homo habilis had a more human-like face with smaller teeth and jaws compared to the Australopithecines. And, but it still retained some of those primitive features you know, such as long arms and a relatively small body. So all Homo habilis did really was make very simple stone tools, you know, using flakes. And um, it just played a significant role in shaping human evolution by improving, you know, how they acquire food, survival skills, and techniques. So we can definitely say A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, definitely walked upright and he is most known for his tool making, which was very important. Then we have Homo ergaster, 1.9 to 1.5 million years ago. And this is the guy that said, hey, I'm done with this Africa. You know what? I'm going out. So this is one of the early human species that, um, you know, took that evolutionary step uh, toward modern where, you know, modern humans where we're at. Um, it had a very much larger uh, brain size, advanced physical skills, a robust torso, longer legs, and um, uh, yeah, and much shorter, less, you know, a, a shorter and less robust uh, torso, actually. And um, it was known to walk and actually run very long distances. So this guy is, you know, <laughs> is kind of the guy that took that big step out of Africa and it gave rise to populations of Homo erectus in uh, Asia. So now we go into Homo erectus. Oh, there's no way we can't say this guy didn't stand up, right? His name, it's in the name, Homo erectus. It's the longest lived and most widespread early human species existing from about 1.9 million years ago to 110,000 years ago. Uh, so again, this, you know, compared to early hominins, it was tall, slender, built to walk long distances, and it had more complex behavior such as controlling fire, um, creating more advanced tools, and even caring for group members. This is the first time where we actually see, well, not the first time, but most profound, where we uh, can say that there is more community, um, you know, group caring, probably group learning, um, and, you know, this transition into later humans where we have, uh, Homo sapiens, right? Then we go into Homo neanderthalensis or the Neanderthals, and, um, they're a close relative to modern humans. Now we're getting closer, 400 to 40,000 years ago, and these guys actually adopted to colder environments. You know, everyone knows about the Neanderthal, the dumb Neanderthal with hoo, 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 right? Um, <laughs> these guys, again, um, colder, much colder um, environments. They lived in Europe and parts of uh, Western Asia, 
now they have more of a stocky build if you can see if you compare it i don't know if you guys can see the difference but definitely um more of a stockier build muscular physique stronger big boned and i think this was really just suited for the uh colder climates these guys same type of thing stone tools they had culture they used fire they hunted large animals and um, even buried the dead. So this kind of showed some symbolic or cultural practices um, that they may have learned from uh, previous ancestors. And, um, you know, these guys, they lasted a good amount of time, but, you know, they went extinct around 40,000 years ago. Uh, and this was, you know, most likely due to competition with you know, homo sapiens, environmental changes, and a combination of factors, all right? Then lastly, we have homo sapien, <laughs> us, right? I have a, um, I have a photo here of uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, so, and then, you know, after Neanderthal, we have us, which is a uh, current, you know, we're a primate species that, you know, all the living humans, which are primary primate species, um, and we're the Homo sapiens. It's a Latin meaning wise man. <laughs> so you know we're most known for our hairlessness. We com compared to our ancestors who were very hairy, bipedalism, and a very high intelligence, which is insane because the only people that really define us are us now. So we define Homo sapien as you know, high intelligence, you know, we're so, we're so full of ourselves, but <laughs> so we're also known for having the larger brains, you know, the capacity for language, ability to use complex tools, and quite frankly, compared to our Neanderthals and, you know, our skeleton is uh, way lighter um, than, uh, you know, some of the early humans. So, this is where we're at right now with Homo sapiens. So that's kind of the timeline. Um, we had, you know, from the very beginning, Artipithecus ramidus, and of course, some of the other hominins before that probably or may have stood upright. Australopithecus afarensis, Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, erectus, Neanderthals, and then ourselves. So what are the key takeaways here? The key takeaways is, Bipedalism allowed early hominins to travel long distances, distances more efficiently. And another thing about bipedalism is its, its origin. There's several factors that may have caused this to occur. You know, up, the upright walking freed hands for to, you know, to make tools, spot predators. Bipedalism also helped with body temperature, reducing sun exposure. It led to the social interactions that needed to be had in these communities, right? There are definitely communities in, um, in, in these early hominins and uh, most importantly, communication. There was changes in the environment, climate shifts that played a significant role in their development. And then how do we know all of this is true? We have fossil records that show adaptations leading to full upright walking. So with all of this combined, bipedalism is one of the most important features that shape human evolution and made us who we are today. You know, it's a cascade of events that occurred that led us to where we are today. So... That's all, guys. That's it about bipedalism. Again, if you guys want to read more, there's definitely a lot of research articles out there. I will uh, link some down below. I think I have one on my blog, but if, if it's there, I'll make sure to link it. But that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.